Hello all, welcome to Selenium Python training series. In this session, as part of utilities, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to read from configuration files. So let's get started. So first of all, we need to understand why we have to read from configuration files, okay? Before understanding how to read from the configuration files in Selenium Python, we have to first understand why. What is the reason behind we have to read the things from the configuration files? Let me answer that for you. The answer for that is to remove the hard coding, okay? Why we have to read from the configuration files? To remove hard coding of, of uh, data, locators, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Generally data only, locators, we have other plans, but uh, to remove the hard coding of the data from the individual automation scripts, we have to read from the configuration files, okay? Only one configuration file will create. For example, here one configuration file you create and uh, let's say there are uh, different Python files where some Selenium Python scripts are written in the form of test. Let's say this particular Python file has some tests written. This one has some tests written. This one has all these boxes are, let's say, tests. Okay, some Selenium Python tests are written in individual Python files here in the form of uh, test methods and all, let's assume. Okay, in this, each and every test method, let's say you are using a URL or something. Okay, in this Python file, somewhere you are specifying the URL, you are specifying the browser name in the automation scripts, and you are hard coding that. Tomorrow, if that particular URL or browser name mentioned in this Python file or this individual test methods change, you have to go to this and update here, update here, update here. Every place, every place where you are using that particular URL or browser name, you have to change by going to each and every test method in this Python files, you have to update the URL. How many times? It depends on how many tests you have created and how many Python files you have. Based on that, that many times you have to keep on updating that, okay? That is a lot of maintenance. That's actually a lot of maintenance where if the project size is very big, it will take a lot of time for you. Every time the client changes the URL that you have to run the scripts on, you have to go to that individual test and update the URL everywhere we have used the URL. That's a problem. This is a problem of hard coding. If you hard code the URL to directly provide the URL browser name, et cetera, in this individual test methods of this Python files, then this results in a lot of maintenance because we are hard coding. So to remove this hard coding, what we do is that particular URL, which may change tomorrow with the client may give another URL where you have to run the scripts. Instead of specifying that URL in this individual test methods, you specify that URL at a centralized location like this config file. Okay, configuration file. Similarly, browser name, browser name you specify here. Maybe some locators in some cases, locator, locator details, okay, that uh, these individual test methods are using. Okay, all these kind of details you may provide in this uh, configuration file. And now we'll remove the hard coding of these particular things. Okay, instead of directly hard coding these URLs, browser names, locators, etc., in these individual files, we'll centralize here in this configuration file. Now all these test methods will access the URL, browser name, locators, etc., from this centralized file. Only one place we have mentioned only one time. Okay, if the tomorrow the URL up gets updated, you don't have to go to this individual uh, test methods or Python files and update. Rather, you simply, okay, rather what you will do, you'll simply go to this configuration file and update the URL at one place. And all these tests are accessing this URL from this place. You see how simple it is. It's very less maintenance, right? Tomorrow the URL changes, you don't have to go to the individual test methods. Rather you go come to this configuration file and update the URL there at a single location and all the test methods will access the URL from this location. This is the advantage of reading the, okay, this kind of details from the configuration files, okay? So now let's understand, let's not worry about real time, how you are storing the URL and accessing in the individual test methods. Let's not bother about that. Rather, okay, I'll show you programmatically how to store these details in the configuration file and how to access this into the programs, programming code, uh, uh, with the help of configurations in Python, okay? In Python, let's not go to Selenium Python. In Python, how to do this? I'm going to show you, okay? How to access all the, the, the details into this programming code from this kind of configuration files, I'm going to show you programmatically. So, how to read from the configuration files. So for that, I'll create a new project. Let me close this and uh, let me create a new project. Uh, file, new project. And here I'll just name this project as uh, configurations uh, demo. Okay, I'm just giving some new window. The project will be created and in a while you will get that main.python file. 
let's wait for the project to be created. Once it is created, you will get this uh, main.py file. Let's remove all these things which are coming by default in the main.py file. So before writing anything here, first I'll create a configuration file. Okay. I'll tell you like uh, how to use configuration files and how to read from configuration files. You already understood the purpose of creating the configuration files and storing the things into the configuration files and reading the things from the configuration files. But now let's see how that is possible programmatically. Okay. With the help of code, how can we read from the configuration files is a motto. But in real time, in Selenium Python scripts, how to use this? I'll cover that during the frameworks. Okay. So for now, for now, let's programmatically understand how this is achievable, how to read from the configuration files. Okay. I'll right click on this project and create a new file. I'll just name this file as config.ini file. The extension should be .ini and press enter. So this config.ini file got created. Now in this, I'll provide some square bracket. And here I need to mention the category name. That is, I'll first mention the category name as, you know, basic info, basic details, anything you want to provide, you can provide. Okay, under this, I'll provide URL is equal to, I'll give the URL as this application URL. Tomorrow, if the URL changes, I can simply come to this configuration file and update the URL here. That's the requirement. Okay. Let's say this is the URL. Copy this URL and uh, paste it here. Similarly, browser. Tomorrow, if you want to run your scripts on a different browser, instead of Chrome, if you want to run on Firefox, okay. Let's say if I mention Chrome here, tomorrow you want to run your scripts on Firefox browser, just come to this config.ini file and update this Chrome to Firefox. Your scripts are going to run on Firefox. Okay, so like that, this kind of basic info you can provide here. And uh, I'll give one more category of uh, these details that I'm storing into the configuration file. That's config.ini file. Let's say locators in login login page. Okay, locators of login page, uh, like this also you can give. You can give a single word, multiple words with spaces, anything is fine. Okay, we will take it. Let's say in this login page, I have the username field. Uh, the locator, let's assume that the locator is like this. I'll just create some dummy locator. The locator. Similarly, there is a password field uh, having a locator like you know. Okay, this is a password locator like this. Okay, like that you can create a list of locators of different pages, and you can create any number of categories here to segregate this data that you are storing in the config.ini file. Now, instead of writing these details directly in the program, we have written them in the centralized location like config.ini file. Tomorrow, if you need these details. From if you have to read this data from this uh, config.ini file, how to read, I'm going to show you. I'll go to this main.py file. There I'll just create like config parser. Okay, I'll create an object for the config parser class and import this config from parser from config for our parser. And here I'll simply give the object reference name as config and give anything. Now using this config dot, uh, you just say dot say read. Okay, from which file we have to read this configuration, uh, the data from the configuration file, that configuration file details you provide here. Okay, so that is config.ini file. In double quotes, you give config.ini. Okay, read the data from the data you have stored in centralized in the config.ini file, right? Read that from which file? Config.ini file. After this, now wherever you want to, you know, read the data from the config, for example, I want to get this URL. How to get this from the this particular URL from the config.ini file. This URL may get updated tomorrow. If the client changes the URL, we'll simply come to the config.ini file and update the URL here. Now, how to get that, whatever the URL that is at that instance, all in the config.ini file into this program, into this Python program. For that simple, I have to write config.get. Okay, I have this get command in Python. So here, I have to provide two things. One is the category under which the data is there. For example, if I have to get the URL, the category name is basic info. Copy this basic info, copy this control C, and here in double quotes, paste it. Provide a comma, and which details you want, I want to get the URL. So copy this URL, that is a key, double quotes give the key. It, it will get you the, it will get you, get you the URL which is centralized in the config.ini file. I can directly print it out, I can, or I can store that into, you know, uh, URL retrieved is equal to and say print off is also fine or directly you can print it also. Now, if I run this code, what will happen? It will retrieve the URL from this uh, basic info from this config.ini file for you. Run this, the so URL got retrieved. Similarly, let's say I would like to retrieve uh, the browser config.getoff. 
two things you have to provide browser is under basic info browser is there so i'll give the basic info here comma next one is browser key is browser this is a key this is a category this is a key key you give here browser that is retrieved from the config file now print it out print browser retrieved run this code you see browser also got retrieved whatever the browser that value that is specified here that got retrieved this is how we can read from the configuration file so we can retrieve a few more details like you know locator login kind of thing is there let's try to retrieve this config dot get off locator login and i would like to retrieve the username username i would like to directly print it out i can directly say print don't have to store into variable every time similarly i would like to retrieve the locator of that uh, you know password field also okay locator login comma password is a key now run this code you see the locator of that uh, username field and locator of the password field also came here now instead of uh, you know writing this way i'll create a function here i'll write this code into a function and uh, def get config i'll just give some user defined name for this method or function and here i'll simply say return i'll simply say return config dot get i'll parameterize this i'll just simply say that here i would like to pass a category comma that category i'll pass here that key i'll pass here now whenever you want to retrieve something simply call this function simply call this function that is get config for example pass basic info url so when i do that what will happen this basic info will go into category and url will go into key and it will read the data from the config.inf file having that particular basic info category and url as a key and it will return you that particular thing that got retrieved that is url of that particular uh, application will be retrieved and uh, you can print it out or you can store that okay url retrieved is equal to you can say here yeah. and you can print it out here every time you want to retrieve you can call this function you can make it reusable okay like this or you can directly say print off in that you can say call the function get config and pass basic info browser this is also fine similarly print off get config is a function reusable function locator login and username pass it pass a category and key and this function is going to get you the details okay similarly print off get config and this is the thing these are the things you have to give locator login is a category and password is a key now run this now run this all the data will come run this all the data will come okay you can create a reusable function this reusable function in real time you can put under the utilities kind of thing and whenever you need to read some data from the configuration files you can call this function from the utilities function the uh, utilities python file and you can get the details in the real time that i'll show you during the uh, framework okay but uh, knowledge purpose you have to understand how to read from the configuration files okay in python this is a way to read the data from the configuration file and you got all the data printed retrieved from the configuration file tomorrow th you see this uh, data is now not hard coded anywhere right the url is not hard coded in this python file rather you are getting the url from where from the configuration file tomorrow the url changes come and update the url here or not only this python file any number of python files if they have to retrieve the data from the config.inf file they can do that by writing by calling this function which will be there in the coming days in the utilities package utilities kind of section okay you can do that any python file can do that we don't have to hard code in all the python files or the python test methods so hope guys you understood how to read from the configuration files and what is the purpose of reading from the configuration files so that's all for this session thank you bye bye